Hi, my name is Dawn Schnettler, and I will be taking you through a demonstration of FMI Compensation's online survey reporting tool. You'll access the tool by opening a web browser, either Safari, Chrome, Internet Explorer, or any other browser. You will navigate to the site www.fminet.com slash FMI Compensation. This is the site that hosts our tool, our online tool, and you will come to a login, a sign-on screen, and you will receive your username and password once you have purchased a survey or a product from us, and then when you have also submitted all data pertaining to that survey. You will receive your username and password and a one-year subscription This is called the landing page because this is the first thing that you will come to once you log in. This is where you will land. I'm going to click this full screen button here. It'll just make this dashboard that we're looking at uh, full screen and it'll kind of clean up my view so that you don't have to see any bookmarks that I have or any other tabs open. I'm going to explain this landing page to you and it has three main parts that I want to highlight and draw your attention to. These are the three pieces that you just have to remember when you're on the, the landing page to help you navigate. The first piece is this two-tone gray box over here on the left. This will show you surveys or products that you have purchased and on the top and then products that you have not purchased on the bottom but that we do still offer. These other products may not pertain to your industry or your company, but uh, they're here because they are things we offer and they may may be interested in them. And if you click on them, the ones that you have not purchased, you will be able to see a sample and get some information on how to contact an account executive so that you may begin the process of possibly pur purchasing that product. On the top again, these are the surveys that you have purchased. So when you click on one, you'll notice that another box loads to the right of this one and it has all the reports inside of it that um, make up this survey. So each of these pieces are what was in our uh, previous static or paper versions of our surveys. And you are getting all the same things that you had before um, and more now. So again, the first part is the surveys that you have and have not purchased, purchased listed on the left, and then the reports above that. And I'll go through each one of these in a moment. But the second piece that I wanna bring your attention to is in the middle of the page. This is going to be our hot topics and news area for you, the user. So we might um, showcase some, an interesting article that was just written um, that has some interesting analysis or trends on our data that's within our database. Um, and that would be kind of industry specific. And also we would have um, things here that are new or coming or pieces that we're working on so that you know what to expect. You log in and you see coming soon this new report you know that um, maybe if that's something you were looking for or wanting you can anticipate that coming if you haven't logged into the system in a while and you log back in and you see that maybe there's an update here that says we've added this report it's not a work in progress anymore it's already there you'll know that a new report up here is one that you may have not seen and so you can click on that and, and look at what's in there um, also, the third part of the landing page is just the, a more informative area. So you might see this icon, this light bulb throughout the system, and this would be an area or a, a piece where we would put some extra information. Um, the box that pops up when I hover over this icon is called a tooltip, and we will utilize those throughout the system, and I'll explain um, some more later. But this is just a way for us to kind of put some more information onto the screen that's not there originally. So when you hover, you can see a little bit of some directions, um, where to click, what to go to. There's an email address for how to contact our account executives if you would like to purchase something else. Um, so if you ever see this icon of a light bulb, this would be like an information area. If you hover, you would get some uh, tips on how to either navigate the page or, or whatnot. Okay, moving on, let's step through each of these reports and I'll show you what those look like. 
So when I clicked, I, I initially I clicked on um, Home Builders Executive. I'm just going to start with Home Builders Professional. And then if I click the Participant Demographics Report, another tab pops up and it loads that report. But also the when you click on a report, the second tab will just load that report that you've clicked on. So you're only going to have to jump back and forth between these two tabs. You Every time you click on a report, there's not going to be another tab or another window that opens. So you won't have 10 tabs open and not remember where you're at. So the first one that I clicked on was the demographics. So this is the list of all the participants that were in that survey, the professional, um, in 2017. You can change the year, and this will give you the, the total. So you can change the year so you can look back and see you know, who participated before. Um, don't forget to click through uh, the different tabs at the top of your dashboard. Some, of, some dashboards have several tabs because we've got a lot of information inside that report. Others, it's just one. So just be aware of that. Um, on this page, this is just uh, giving you some information of the incumbents per state. The color legend in the center of the chart shows you quickly what the, high, the lowest and the highest value is um, of incumbent count per state. You can change the year as well. And the information down here will change as well. And this is just a breakout of um, companies by size and uh, their incumbents. If you, so again, talking about the tooltip, if you notice, um, let's see, Kentucky, does not have um, a number displayed on that state because it's kind of in the center, it's a little bit small, and maybe the graphic couldn't fit that value in there. So if you hover, you'll see this tooltip pop up again, and it'll tell you the state and then the incumbents, and uh, it should tell you the survey year, which I will fix soon. And that brings me to my next point, is that this is a very iterative um, process that we're going through. We want to bring you the best um, system for looking at compensation data that, that there is, and we want to continually improve and make this the best system for you, the user, to make business decisions and stay ahead of your competition. So we look forward to any feedback, and uh, we can only get better with your help and with all the use of the system. So if you ever see anything that maybe isn't popping up or showing up, take a screenshot, send it to us. We would be happy to, to look into that because we want this to be a system that you can rely on and that you trust to give you accurate data. So again, if you see um, a state or I'm sorry, any part of any chart that you can't make out the value of, if you hover, that tooltip will have that information in there for you. Um, if you, a little couple of tips to navigate the map. Um, this crosshairs right here, this is my pan tool. This just allows me to grab the map and kind of move it around and look at different parts of the world. If I wanted to zoom into a certain area, I would click this zoom area tool. And then if I just wanted to look at the northeast, it'll zoom me into that area. But if I want to just select a few states, I can use either any of these little um, dotted line tools. So this one's just in the shape of a rectangle, but I believe they all do the same thing. This will select a couple of states for you. So it won't zoom, it'll just select those that get highlighted. And then um, if you click this home button, this will kind of reset your map. And then if you click out, uh, outside of that selection, everything will re reselect. This next tab is just some more demographic information. Um, again, with the tooltip, if in this red, sliver down here, if I can't see what the value is or what the um, business entity type is, if I hover, I can see that that's ESOP and a number of companies in there is one. So one ESOP for um, 2017 home builders. So just an just a interesting um, breakdown of some demographics and we'll try to do some comparisons between the current survey year and the one prior. And anything that you see on your screen any report that you see, um, you'll be able to download to a PDF version or a file so that you can share it or incorporate it in any other presentations that you're doing. And you can also download an Excel version or a crosstab version of data that you're looking at on your screen. I will 
go into more detail in the Excel report because you will still have the ability to kind of do a data dump and download um, a large amount of the data at one time instead of um, just a small sliver. So again, moving on through these reports, so I clicked on the information report. You notice that this tab loaded, so I didn't have another one that popped up, just one. So I'm gonna full screen again, just to make it easier to view. So this is our methodology. This gives you just a breakdown of how we calculate things and um, what each piece uh, of our data means. In the box and whisker plot, this can be a little bit confusing, um, the terminology inside the box and whisker plot. So I'm just gonna explain that for you right here. Um, we at FMI, we filter out any data that is outside of three standard deviations from the sample mean for a survey title in a given year. So any value, again, any value that's outside of three standard deviations from the mean, we will take out of the data set altogether and it will not be included. However, in a box and whisker plot, the terms that are used um, by the system that we're using and also just in general are um, a little bit different and they could be confusing. So the circles or the dots above this long line, these are in the box and whisker plot definitions, these are outliers, but they're outliers in the sense of the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is this, the difference between this line right here and the, different, and the line right here. So a box plot is actually broken up into percentiles or quartiles, I'm sorry. And this line right here, this is our maximum value. And between this top line and this line right here is our uh, 75th percent, or this line is our 75th percentile. The median, which is where the two gray boxes meet, is the 50th percentile, and that's right here. And then this bottom line right here, this is the 25th percentile. And then the maximum and the minimum values are calculated by finding the difference between the 75th and the 25th percentile and then multiplying by one and a half. So that would give you our minimum value or the lower whisker. That would also give you the maximum value or the upper whisker. And that, again, that's maximum and minimum values in the sense that they are within one and a half times the interquartile range. We wanted to leave these quote unquote outliers here for you to see because these are still within three standard deviations of the mean. They're just really extreme values. They're outside of the inner quartile range um, that a box plot uses. So we wanted to go with this approach of showing you the data and kind of showing you that this is a, an extreme value and not necessarily a maximum value because um, we want the users to make the best decisions that they can and to really see which pieces of the data might be tipping the scale um, or which values might be within the three standard deviation realm, but they might be a little uh, out of the norm for what you're looking at. And you could very clearly see that with a box plot. And on the definitions tab, this is just showing you which states are in which region as we have defined them so that you know exactly what's in you know, the South, for example. Also at the bottom of the screen is our glossary. So this is just a little bit more interactive than you know, a flat um, glossary you could just scroll through. So if you um, cover or if you hover over uh, the term that you want, it'll be highlighted in gray if you can see that. You can click. On the term or you could type in this bar right here if you know exactly the piece you're wanting and then the definition will change at the bottom and tell you what that is the position report is the heart of each of our surveys because this gives you the user the ability to do the most slicing and dicing of the data you can, um, what previously we called special cuts, uh, which would cost the price of a survey and take a lot of time for FMI to produce for you, you can now do on your own as many times as you want with just the click of a button. 
And that's where the most value we, we believe is being added using our systems. So if I'm full screen this report, you'll notice I don't have tabs at the top of this one. This is just a standalone dashboard. This is our, again, position report. And I have construction manager is my survey title that was selected. If I want to choose a different one, again, I can scroll or I can type in this bar. But the type survey title will show up at the at this top, and then the job description will show up at the bottom. The um, number of companies reporting for that survey title and then the number of incumbents will also appear. The percentiles going across the center, we have um, the 10th through the 90th and the median and the mean, but we need at least five companies to report on the 40th, 50th, and 60th percentile and the mean. If we don't have at least five companies reporting, these, these boxes will be blank. Doesn't mean that there weren't companies reporting, it's just that we can't show you those values. Similarly, with the 25th and 75th percentile, we need at least seven companies reporting. And with the 10th and the 90th, we need at least nine. So if you see some blank boxes within this report, it's just because we, there weren't enough companies or incumbents um, receiving to give you the, the aggregate value. On the left-hand side, we have our compensation types. So we've got base, bonus, commission, other things. You can see that down the, the left-hand side. This is our professional. Uh, this, this dashboard you're looking at is for our professional survey. So this has short-term incentive information in it. Um, you can go between survey years. So you can look back at prior years to make any comparisons or just to do some checking. You can multi-select different revenue ranges. So you can have any combination of revenue ranges you would like, along with any combination of regions, states, MSAs, and all of these, which I will go through right now. Um, just as an example, I will um, unselect all, and I'm just gonna look at the one to three billion revenue range for, um, let's look at construction a very well populated position in the survey. And um, at the industry tab, so this, or I'm sorry, the industry filter, this exact report that you're looking at right now is used in some of our other surveys for the construction industry. So that can be broken down into a couple of different sub industries. And that's what this filter is here for. Since it doesn't apply to home builders, it's blank and it just has null. So you can choose, you can click these if you want or not. It's not going to make any difference because this just doesn't apply. But it's helpful to know why that's there. Region names. Um, again, you can multi-select these. I'm just going to look at, actually, you know what? I'm pretty interested in looking at Miami because we have had, oops, since I have no region names selected, have no MSAs to choose from. So I'm gonna go back into region name and I will click cell. We, as you know, have had a lot of um, natural disasters in this, this year, um, particularly in the South and particularly in Houston and Miami areas. So um, if you think about it, there's probably gonna be a lot of rebuilding in those areas. And um, if that's an area where your company operates, uh, you wanna get some data specifically about Miami, for any other MSA, um, you can have the ability to zoom down to that level with the combination of other filters and you did not have this ability before. Um, also, okay, so what I wanted to show you was that once you slice the data a little thin sometimes, you know, I chose one revenue range and I drove it all the way down to an MSA level, um, I get down to a flag that says insufficient data. I've got one company reporting, I can't show anything here. So this flag will let you know that you've just sliced the data a little too thin, so maybe we should expand some of our filters. I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna choose, uh, let's add on another revenue range just in case. Maybe I, maybe I can do some comparisons that way. So we've got some, some more companies were added when I um, selected another revenue range. I could take the revenue range filter off completely and still be focused in on Miami. 
And so I can make some uh, decisions that way, staying focused in on where I want to be. Um, also in these filters, bonus status. So this is just uh, looking at people that did and did not earn a bonus and what their compensation was. Uh, constant population. These are folks that were in their position the year prior or not. Um, and then again, the class description and the project description, those are for an engineering survey that we have. We use the same dashboard. Um, it just gets filled with different data. So again, if you see something that doesn't have values in it, it just doesn't apply and you can't break it. If you are clicking around on the system and you, for some reason, end up in a spot where you're not sure you should be, um, you can always call us and we will help you to get back to where you, you should be. Um, the system is very stable and um, reliable, so we, we feel that you will be able to uh, make any filter selections you want, and um, we're trying to keep it simple so we don't overwhelm, but we also want to um, continually improve and add things, so these dashboards will hopefully look better and better over time. The geographic report numerically has a similar number, well, the same numbers that are in the position report. Uh, it's just kind of given in a different format. Some people are visual learners, so this just kind of gives you a little bit more interesting picture to look at when you're looking at those numbers instead of tabular or cross tab. Similarly, with the demographics report that I showed you earlier, um, you still have a lot of the, all the same functionality in the map with these tools. Um, you also have that color legend at the bottom to quickly show you the highest and lowest values. Um, what we're looking at is the construction superintendent and their average base. You can choose different compensation elements to view. So we could look at average total cash, average commission, et cetera. Um, if you hover over the region, again, we have that tooltip. And it'll give you the national average as well as the region average so that you can make a quick comparison. And obviously, that national average will be the same as I move across the regions. Uh, 69.3. And the number of companies and number of employees reporting per region are showed as well. Um, we use this dashboard for all of our surveys, so we also have the levels from CEO filter in here, but again, it doesn't apply to home builder professionals, so it's not going to have uh, the data in there. So we try to take care of all that for you. Uh, moving to the next tab. This is, so again, we were looking at construction superintendent, and that national average was 69.3. So if you hover over the state, you'll still see that national average and then the, the state average as well. And um, again, all the same filter combinations that you want. You can print anything to PDF. You can also, um, after you make any filter selections, on this page as well as on any dashboard, especially that position report we just looked at, you can export what you've looked at or chosen to a cross tab if you would like. Again, you can look back at multiple years, choose different compensation types to look at, um, and have any combination of any of these filters that you want. With the MSA level, um, this is just neat because it just breaks it down even further for you, but if you hover, you still see that national average 69.3. Um, so we think that breaking it down into the, the three different levels that we can go um, really helps you to drill in and see, you know, where, where the hot spots are, or the cold spots. Okay, in the historical trends report, this is where those box plots really come into play. Um, and I want to kind of show you an example of those again. <clears throat> on the full screen, I usually do. I just think it makes it look a lot better. Um, so for, the, for this dashboard, I want to show you we're on customer service representative and we're looking at average base. Uh, I'll stay there, but I wanna go to the revenue range of, um, let's look at 500 million to a billion. Okay. I wanted to show you a couple things now. When I hover over the box plot, so, so when I hover over a data point, I get that tool tip that we've been talking about. But when I hover over the box plot specifically, I get this um, tool tip 
but I actually cannot alter anything that's inside of this tooltip associated with the box plot. That's why I wanted to walk you through all those different terms earlier and tell you what they mean. And you can always reference back to that um, information report to see that breakdown. But the upper whisker, again, is this bar right here. This is our maximum value that is within one and a half times the interquartile range, which is the difference between this, the top and the bottom of this gray box. So this value right here is considered an outlier or an extreme value because it is outside of one and a half times this interquartile range. Um, the, this line right here, again, is the 75th percentile, and it's the upper hinge. Then where the two gray boxes meet, that's the median or the 50th percentile. The lower hinge is the 25th percentile, and then the lower whisker is that minimum value within one and a half times the interquartile range. Um, sometimes, uh, if you notice, we, we jump from 2013 to 2017. So sometimes when you slice data, to a certain revenue range or a combination of different filters, and maybe it's a survey title that was not reported on heavily in the past, or it's you know, more popular now, you might not see historical data um, for various reasons. We might, we might have just not had enough companies. Maybe we had four instead of five companies reporting for customer service representative in this revenue range, so we can't show you that. So just giving you a heads up of why you might see some quote unquote missing data, it just might mean that we didn't have enough to report. But again, if you ever see anything and you're just not sure about it, maybe it should be there, maybe it shouldn't, just give us a call and we will be happy to, to look into it for you and help explain anything. <clears throat> Automobile, so this report has everything to do with automotive data, gas cards, vehicles provided, and auto allowances. So if I click screen again. This one is a little bit unique because I can multi-select um, different um, survey titles and I can look at all of them at one time if I wanted to do some comparisons. So I've got all of them listed right here. I have the company count in the bigger rectangle behind the smaller one. And that's the case on the top and the bottom. So the top one is about number of companies providing the automotive data that we're looking at. So right now we're talking about auto allowance. And then on the bottom chart, this is the number of employees receiving the auto allowance. So out of the 25 companies reporting to have a construction manager, uh, 17 of those companies provided auto allowance to the construction manager. And then you can see the, the totals of the incumbents down here. And then again, if you hover, maybe you can't see that 73, it kind of looks like it's in white writing like these ones. If you hover, you'll still be able to kind of see some of that information. So really use that tooltip if there's a data point you can't really see. Um, also, you can look at different survey years. And again, the, you can look at vehicles provided or gas cards provided. <clears throat> on the second tab, this is uh, where I can show you some averages. So I've got um, the survey year, again, you can choose. And I have number of companies reporting for a survey title, and then the number of companies providing that auto allowance. So it's again like that big, bigger blue bar, and then that smaller orange bar. That's what these numbers represent. Um, and then the same thing with the employees receiving. So unless this number right here, number of companies providing an auto allowance, unless this number is five, I cannot give you an average over here on this column as our policy states. But just in case you're wondering why there might not be values over here, that would be why. We set up our Excel report um, in the same fashion. So for every piece of compensation that you're looking at, whether it's base, bonus, total cash, uh, we'll give you the number of companies reporting for the survey title, but then also the number of companies providing um, that specific piece. Uh, so that's really nice. We think it gives you a more transparent view of what you're looking at. <clears throat> and if we go into that Excel report, I will show you that now. Um, these pages, there's a, all the tabs 
if you purchased surveys from us in the past and you got the giant Excel report that came with the survey, um, all the tabs in that Excel report are available here as well. So you can get all the breakdowns um, as far as looking at just bonus earners and non-bonus earners or just constant population, et cetera. So I'm gonna click full screen again. You can, on this report, you can select multiple years to look at again. Um, and as we said, I have my number of companies reporting and the number of employees um, in that position. And then also the, the number of companies providing and then employees receiving. Uh, and in this case, we're talking about base. So it would make sense that these numbers match for an accountant. But as you go down the line, you see that we get to bonus. So 21 of the 23 companies that reported um, having an accountant are giving a bonus. And similarly, 97 of the 248 accountants are receiving a bonus. And it's the same going across this all the way down to total cash. And um, again, if you Notice at the top, I've got all the same tabs that was in the previous Excel report. Um, bonus earners, non-bonus earners. One thing I wanted to point out is that that information will be on the same line, kind of like merged cells, if you will. So this survey here is like a giant merged cell and then the account, accountant survey title is, and then it breaks down into the two rows of people that earned a bonus and then people that did not. And same thing with constant population, you'll have your yeses and nos on the same line so you can make quick comparisons. And you'll be able to download this to an Excel or cross tab report. Um, you could print it to a PDF if you wish. Um, another uh, big differences between these uh, products right here is um, the survey titles. So let's just go ahead into the position report and I'll kind of show you some of that. Um, we do have board of director information and proxy reports for the executive survey. Um, and I will show you those. But in the executive survey, we, we collect short-term short incentive information, but also long-term incentive information. So we've got our stock awards, uh, stock options, total NEQ, and um, we also have the levels from CEO filter because that applies to the executive survey. So we've got that here. And you can see your, your company and incumbent count as well. Okay, board of directors. Um, this information is like we took what was in the static um, PDFs uh, prior and we put them into uh, these kind of online interactive dashboards. We will continually make them better and more interactive, but um, as you can see, we, di we didn't leave anything out. So that's why I wanted to show you these. You're still going to get everything that you had in the PDF form of the survey and much more and it'll only get better. We will only improve. Uh, proxy reports. So this is um, already public information that's available online. So we would never show your company data um, to anyone. That's not what this system does. Um, this reports survey information at an aggregate level, as you're seeing. We will, in the future, work towards um, having the ability for you, the user, to filter your company's data out of the total population so that you can see um, you know, the numbers with your data included uh, and without. So we will build that functionality in as we go. Um, but for right now, you can the only place where you would be able to choose a specific company would be in the proxy data information because that's already public data. Um, so just a quick view. Um, you know, you can choose your company in the drop down and um, the company you want to look at. I'm sorry. And then if you go to the C suite tab, you can choose um, the different positions to look at, etc.
And then in the sales and design report, um, kind of the only difference is that we have a filter on the position report and everywhere else that allows you to see the, um, the different types of incumbents that are special to the sales and design survey because we have um, folks that, and so this will be the incumbent type filter, but we've got people that earn a base and they're salaried. We also have people that are um, getting paid hourly rates. And we also have people that do not have a base at all. They are peer commission um, or just bonus and peer commission. That's what they get paid on. So we can filter, we can look at everybody all together, or we can look at these different breakdowns as well as any combination of these other filters. So for sales representative, um, right now I'm looking at all incumbent types. If I filter for just hourly, I just wanna point out to you that the hourly rate is here and we have calculated an, um, a, a yearly rate, or not rate, but the yearly amount that you would get if you were being paid this hourly rate. So when you have selected hourly as the incumbent type and you see that there's a base on the screen, that's not, that's an annualized hourly rate. That's not um, their salary, hourly employees. If I look at salaried, um, then that hourly rate will be blank because they obviously do have salaries. They do have a base. And then if I look at no base pay, base and hourly rate will be bonus, or I'm sorry, will be blank. And um, the other ones will be filled in because these people do not have a base. So I just wanted to show you that in case you were not aware that that was um, some functionality that you have within the sales and design survey. That really concludes the demo, and um, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to watch this and um, get more information on our online system. We know that this tool will put you ahead of your competition, and it will allow you to um, log in and see near real-time, up-to-date information throughout the year. So if you purchase a survey, um, we don't have hard deadlines anymore for participating or missing, missing the boat. You can participate at any time in the year, um, but we do still stick to hard uh, payroll dates so that there's commonality in the data, obviously. So um, if you submit your data in March and you see that maybe 20 other companies have done so, you can see information, but then maybe if you log in in a couple of weeks, or hopefully you haven't waited this long, but a couple of months, there would be more companies in there, 50 more hopefully, and that is the goal that we will grow our, our customer base um, to give you, the user, the most beneficial data um, to make any business decisions that you need. Um, we know that this will put you ahead of your competition because you can see continually what everyone is doing in the market and how things are performing. So again, if you um, would log into the system multiple times in the year, you would see more and more data and um, we, do, we know that the system will be very beneficial to you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Please contact us or uh, myself, Don Schnettler, um, Carol Mortz, or any of the account executives, Raul Uriostegui, Danny Nanez, or Alexis Wyatt. We would be happy to assist you with looking at another demo or getting your hands on a sample. Thank you.